Hello everybody. Um, just thought I'd welcome you to another episode of Cooking with Denoy. And this episode's a bit different as you can see because we are not cooking inside Little Blue. We are actually cooking at the hut. And um, the hut has had some major, major, major renovations and upgrades. Um, I've been out here now for at least a day. Uh, came out here the other day to uh, see if I could spend the night at the hut, which I did. I did not sleep in the hut. I slept in my vehicle. It's a lot more comfortable in there. But I went shopping yesterday. By shopping, I mean driving around the compound. And um, picked up a whole bunch of materials. And using those materials, I did some major, major upgrades. As you can see, step back here. The hut now has roofing and um, even has our logo and doors. These doors open and close. And you can strap them down with the strap here to lock it in place if you need to. But I usually like it open. And you can hear the thunder and the storm. I slept through that last night out here at the hut. It was kind of a little bit freaky. But you know what's interesting about sleeping inside a vehicle? It felt like I was sleeping anywhere else. Inside, the vehicle looked the same and felt the same. But outside, we were actually at Camp Freedom 2. There are upgrades here on this side as well. You can see we now have roofing. And I put this area here just to give ourselves a little bit more roof and protection from the rain and the sun. And also, I found that the water drips here, and now it goes into our catchment system down here. I um, put up some side walls here for this wooden, I mean, um, this work area, which is an outdoor cooking or working area. I don't know about cooking. You could catch things on fire, but you could use it to work. But there's like a little shed down there, which is kind of somewhat dry. So maybe uh, firewood could be put down there. We have the rocket stove still, but the rocket stove should not be used inside the building because the flames can shoot pretty high and stuff can fly out. Um, if you find yourself at Camp Freedom 2, I recommend if you're going to use the rocket stove to bring it outside and use it right over here at the front of the building. Maybe over here a little bit away from everything so and have water ready just in case you need to quickly put it out. Um, as far as cooking and stuff, the um, we're actually still cooking through the inverter system. I just ran a cable from the vehicle. Um, but that means uh, the hut itself um if if i had like solar power and a battery pack um battery system you could have electricity out here and cook and do things and it, it's like a functional house almost the only problem is all the uh, mosquitoes and stuff that come out at night i also put in a, a back um patio area here you can see there is roofing here for the patio so that gives you a little bit more space and more protection from the um, sun and the rain. And of course, we have our laundry hanging section here. That tub down there is for the laundry. I still need to clean. It's kind of messy, as you can see, because I've been working. The latrine, the bathroom, now has our logo as well. Still looks pretty much the same, except now we have working light. I'll be I'll be adding some lights to um, the hut itself, depending on my uh, financial situation. Those lights aren't too expensive, but when you don't have any money, <laughs> you don't have any money. So um, I'm gonna see what happens if, if I can get some money. I'll probably try to put some lights in here and some battery systems. And maybe leave a, um, a radio or something for people who come out here to use. 
but um oh yeah and this chair was also garbage it's got a broken part right here so don't lean on it if you come here and use this chair but it's perfect for sitting in our little hut looking out at our view and uh, just enjoying everything here and this is our backyard And there you have it, the upgraded hut. I think um, what I may do, if I have some money and time, I may put mosquito netting all over the hut. Then you could conceivably sleep out here, although I don't know if I would want to. It's just more comfortable inside the vehicle. So I don't, I don't know if I'll really do that. But, um, I mean, somebody that wanted to live here could finish off the hut and make it a real home. For me, it's a really nice base camp now. You know, I can just come and chill here. Um, as, long, as long as the water catchment system catches a lot of rain, I could shower and stuff out here and do laundry. So, oh, I gotta warn you. There are ants, like big fat ants down here. Fire ants as well as carpenter ants. So, as soon as I can afford it, I'm going to go try to get some, um, what is it, diatinaceous earth or um, borax. I might put borax down and just a little bit of borax on the floor or diatinaceous earth and just spread it all over the floor down here because there's ants down here, which is bad if you're sitting in here. See the ant here? It's a huge. See them? But there's also little ones. Those are the mean ones. Those are the fire ants. Oh, and you can see here the ants are grabbing my rice. See that, that rice that's walking? There's an ant moving it. <laughs> the ant is like carrying my rice. I dropped some rice out here. And look at it. Within minutes, they got it. Look how strong they are. So maybe having the ants in here isn't so bad after all. They kind of clean up the place. Yeah, I spilled some rice and um, the ants are already taking it. So now I'm not sure if I want to kill all these ants. Back there in that pile are ants also. If I can get a, um, if I can get a shovel, I'm going to clear that area out there because there are big, huge carpenter ants back there. And I still haven't finished clearing the back and I don't know if I'm going to or not. I mean, I cleared it to the water, but now I'm thinking, I don't think I want to go get that water. It looks pretty filthy. It looks pretty disgusting. I'd rather just get water from the catchment system. And, um, I haven't really experienced, uh, like, bad, bad weather in here yet. I have sat in here when it was raining, and it kept me fairly dry. Although, as you can see on that wall there, there is some leakage. So I have to figure out where that is and possibly do a repair. But um, overall, I think the hut is shaping up uh, very nicely. As you can see, our rice cooker has popped, so it, the rice is done. Mmm, this rice is done. So I'm going to get the other cooker, the other pot, and then start up to fry up some um, fried scrambled eggs to have with rice. It's going to be a very simple meal, but it's what I have with me. All right, um, as you can see, I'm getting ready to make the scrambled eggs. And for the scrambled eggs, I just crack two eggs. And I'm um, going to try some of this chopped onion, dried chopped onion. Onions. Now we're going to use this um, body of complete seasoning. I love that stuff. Okay. And then it's just a matter of mixing up the eggs. 
and then we're going to put it into the um, rice cooker here and set it on high. Basically, we're making scrambled eggs and rice. This is obviously easier with two hands, so I could hold the, um... ...bowl here. And now we're gonna pour it in here. Mmm. Isn't that good? Set the temperature to high. Put our lid back on it. And just let it cook. Meanwhile, we'll clean up the dishes and stuff. As you can see, the egg is pretty cooked on one side. I'm going to flip it. Flip it over. Doesn't that look good? Put the lid back on it. And put the heat on it for a little bit longer, and then it should be done. So yeah, we're going to just push the heat. And just let it cook until it pops or something. Or just for a few more minutes. That'll let the other side cook. Then it's time to eat. <laughs>